guys and welcome to Griffo's Retro Gaming. Today we turn our focus to the excellent Game Boy Advance system and take a look at five underappreciated games because the library of software was so much more than Pokemon, Metroid, Zelda and SNES ports. Now please do remember that this isn't a ranking of the five best but purely just a selection of five great games. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Developed to coincide with the 40th anniversary of the anime version of Astro Boy, Omega Factor is a celebration to the legacy of the friendly robot boy, who is absolutely massive in Japan. In the West, however, Astro Boy is a relative unknown. So, how can you make it appeal to a Western audience? Easy. Simply make it one of the best games on the system. Seriously though, the gameplay is an absolute joy. It mixes both platformer and shmup, giving it a really unique feel. The levels are varied and fun, which really keeps you invested in the story. Throughout the game, you have to punch, kick and shoot your way through waves of baddies, and it all runs smoothly for the most part. The shmup levels are interspaced between the platform levels to break up the pace nicely and provide an extra layer to the game. These levels aren't too hard either, and that's not a knock on the game whatsoever, but more a compliment to how accessible and fun Astro Boy is, and that is its charm. It appeals to everyone. It's an absolute gem of a game that you really must play. The Tony Hawk console games are just incredible. Well, except Fav and that shitty rad thing. But yeah, generally very good. And amazingly, the Game Boy Advance part of Tony Hawk Underground is no exception. Looking at the back of the box, you are greeted with pictures that look like they were taken from a mobile phone version. However, once you pop the cartridge in, you realise just how well the developers did in making what feels like a full Tony Hawk experience on the go. You start the game as an amateur skater in a true story mode. Unlike other previous Tony Hawk's games, you played as pro skaters and had tasks rather than a story. Moving to the graphics, it's a mixed bag, as the character models look, well, crap. But the animations are really fluent and smooth. The areas though look fantastic when comparing them to other Game Boy Advance games showcasing arguably some of the best backgrounds on the system. The gameplay is fantastic and yes it is a big name game but the developers have worked hard to offer the best playing experience despite the limitations of the Game Boy Advance. Everything runs flawlessly, maybe a little slowly making the game feel less of an arcade game, but that's not a bad thing because it's backed up with some fantastic animations with no delay from a button press or slow down or lag, which when you consider everything going on on the screen at once, it just seems remarkable. Sadly, it did fly under a lot of people's radar, but trust me, Tony Hawk Underground isn't to be overlooked, and it's cheap to buy. Okay, look, hear me out on this one, because it's not just another Pokemon cash grab. Well, yeah, it mainly is, but in all honesty, it's a fantastic pinball game. Using Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire as two separate tables, your aim is to catch all the different Pokemon. There's a variety of different factors involved in catching a certain Pokemon, ranging from points attained, hitting certain areas on the table and completing bonus stages. If you was to strip Pokemon away from the game, you are actually left with a really good pinball game. The ball moves smoothly, the ball physics feel very natural, you even, at times, get a feeling of the weight on the ball, adding a sense of realism to the game. It really does all come down to the perfect balance between the gameplay and Pokemon theme. Having to complete your Pokedex seems daunting, but in practice it's really enjoyable and very addictive. You have to enable catch and mode by hitting either Sharpedo or Wilma, depending on which board you're on. This reveals the shadow of a Pokemon available to catch, at which point 
you must then hit the bumpers three times to be able to catch the Pokemon. Although it is a spin-off game, it is actually really good. And you can tell that time, care and creativity has been put into making the game as close to the source material as a pinball game possibly can. It's definitely worth a go, even if you aren't into Pokemon itself. I'm joking here, right? Well, no, actually, it's bloody fantastic. You see, Everything or Nothing is an original story set in the James Bond world, but it is still set out like a film, right from the dramatic opening. Being a Game Boy Advance release meant that some major changes had to be made to this port from the console versions for it to be able to run on the system. So, how do you turn a 3D console game into a 2D handheld game? Isometric view of course! But in all seriousness, the developers did a wonderful job with this port because it looks fantastic and that is down to the isometric viewpoint. The animations are smooth, the characters and objects look nice and the backgrounds are very well done. The James Bond universe is represented about as well as it possibly can on the Game Boy Advance. In terms of gameplay, everything or nothing blends stealth, action and driving, offering real variety to the game. The stealthy missions in the game can be a little awkward as the camera is a little close to James Bond, meaning that you can be seen despite no enemies being on the screen, which is rather annoying. Otherwise though, they're nice sections to play. The driving levels are very good too, and reminded me of Spy Hunter. Your car is equipped with missiles and machine gun, and you can even release oil for taking out enemies behind you, which is really fun despite the controls being a tad fiddly. The game offers some really detailed and fun missions with some small samples of voice acting from John Cleese and Dame Judi Dench. The musical score is outstanding. It's really well produced and sets the mood and turn of the game perfectly. It's easy to overlook a James Bond game on a handheld system and think of it as just a lazy cash grab, but the developers really put the time and love into this game making it feel as big budget as any James Bond film is. Yeah, okay, I am a Baldur's Gate fanboy as we all know, but hear me out on this one, because despite the game being a console hack and slash, the Game Boy Advance port is fantastic in its own right. Due to the limitations of the hardware, some changes had to be made from the console versions. The main difference is that the game uses two-dimensional graphics in an isometric perspective. This is to give the illusion of a 3D game. The other differences are to your character. With you only being able to be human, and you can only be a warrior, a wizard or an archer, which are identified by their different coloured clothing. Then differences aside, you are left with a very good and satisfying game that looks wonderful on the small screen. Being a Dungeons and Dragons game, it is set in a medieval-esque world, full of wonder. And the attention to detail is just superb, right down to the cobwebs in the corner of the room, and torches and lamps that give off a pretty realistic light on their surroundings. There's also special effects for magic attacks and enchanted weapons, which really surprised me. And yeah, it's only a little thing. Yeah, it's the little things that make a difference. Graphically, everything just comes together wonderfully to draw you into the game and keep you there. There's not much in the way of music, sadly, but when a musical score hits, the results are rather impressive and complement the setting beautifully. So, how is the combat then? Well, it's actually very smooth and fast-paced. I noticed that there was a decent amount of animation sprites that have been drawn up, and the hit detection, which is usually not too great on an isometric screen, is bang on point. The battles are fun, and whilst they are understandably simplistic, they are still really satisfying. The story is okay, but sadly it's too short. As you can imagine, the storytelling in the game is just text-based and brief. 
However, this allows more memory to dedicate to different weapons, armor, and monsters, making a short game rather deep and interesting. The developers did a wonderful job with the game, and even if you're not into Dungeons and Dragons, this game is a fantastic action RPG which really got the best out of the Game Boy Advance system. And that is my five picks for the most underappreciated Game Boy Advance games. Have you played any of these? And if so, what did you think? I'll look forward to seeing your responses. But for now, I must bid you farewell, and I will see you very soon with another video. Thank you for watching.